Hello and welcome. My name's Lucy Muddyman. I work for Savills and today I'm joined by John Hammond of Hammond Produce. As well as working for Savills, I'm also co-founder and sponsor of the Women in Agriculture Group, along with my colleagues from Langley's, AMC, Forrester Boyd and Lincoln Agricultural Society. We had hoped to bring you a number of events this year, but due to COVID, we've had to cancel these. However, thanks to the powers of technology, we are able to bring you this virtual farm walk. None of this will be possible, however, without the time and patience of John Hammond. John, welcome and thanks for joining us. Morning. John, if you can just give us a bit of background as to who's involved, the family members involved, please. Sure, so we, uh, we're a family business. We've been uh, operating agriculture since 1900 and we're really lucky to still have both father and uncle uh, still very much involved in the business. Um, but it's myself, my brother, um, that are the directors of the, uh, the produce business and various other um, uh, uh, operations that we have going on. Yeah. Um, we both have two children who we're very much hoping are going to come into the business at some stage in the uh, in the very distant future. They've got to go off and do something sensible first. <laughs> Your brother being the one on the far right and obviously you're the one as I'm looking at it on the left. Yes. I know, John, you describe yourself as farmers first and foremost, but you've also diversified into other businesses. First of all, I suppose there's Borderfields, the oil, rapeseed oil production and packaging company. And then there's Phoenix, the contract packing business. And then also the schools, which I know you spend a lot of time over the summer hosting. Um, I think if we, if we start by looking at the farm, John, when I came up to see you, um, well, I've been up twice recently, on this occasion, it was it was a really misty morning, and I don't think this photo of the farmyard up at Red Hill, New Farm Red Hill, does justice really to the scale of the business that you operate. Um, could you just give us a bit of back well background and an overview as to what you do on the farm, please? So we're farming about a thousand hectares, mainly in Nottinghamshire, growing a range of vegetable crops, predominantly carrots, parsnips, a range of cabbages, rhubarb, squash, some kale. Um, we're also uh, growing potatoes, uh, maize for AD and various uh, combinable crops, um, predominantly wheat. We also farm uh, with partners elsewhere in the UK um and in southern europe and even as far as israel to cover us uh for the the, the non-uk season of, of various vegetable crops yeah okay and then we've got border fields there you are sat in the office um with the factory in the background um do you want to explain please just what border fields is so Borderfields is our rapeseed brand. Um, we began crushing rapeseed in 2004. Uh, we set up a business basically to convert uh, Nottinghamshire grown rapeseed into biodiesel, um, but a, a, a U-turn by government uh, not very long after we started uh, reduced the, the, the government support on uh, low carbon fuels. So we embarked on a culinary oils um, business um, we bought the brand uh, from a company up in Northumberland uh, in 2008 and the rest, as they say, is history. Um, the Borderfields brand goes into most of the UK uh, mainstream retailers, um, with the exception of the discounters and I think uh, Waitrose, it goes yes. to all the others. Okay. Um, but also we supply into, um, uh, into all retailers with their own brand. Okay. From that, really, you've spurred off into and diversified into the packaging side of things, haven't you? Phoenix Group. Yeah. So we, uh, the factory at, at Phoenix, um, which is uh, on the Rufford Park Estate up at uh, up at Rufford, um, we have a forty-five thousand square foot building where we pretty crush the rapeseed and bottle. 
um, but also we provide packing services for a whole range of uh, other businesses. We're kind of the the, um, the pseudo factory, if you like, between uh, having a small industrial unit and being able to, to have your own factory. So we're working with companies uh, handling um, coconut oil, avocado oil, um, we're packing sauces and, and dressings, a little bit of manufacturing uh, of sauces as well. So we're, we, we basically offer an end-to-end -end service um, to manufacture bottle label uh, and dispatch for uh, medium size um, uh, ambient stable food businesses. Yeah. And then something that you're really passionate about, the schools. Yeah, I mean, for, for the last 15 plus years, um, we've been trying to encourage an increasing number of school children to come out to farm. Uh, in the summertime, um, we, we peak at about a thousand uh, junior school children uh, each summer. Um, it's a hell of a commitment, but the the um, the warmth that we get from it and the benefit we think that the, that the children get from it is huge. I mean, a thousand children sounds a lot, but there are 65,000 junior school children in Nottinghamshire alone. So we're hardly scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. And yet these are our, our industry's future consumers. And yep. as time progresses, we're becoming, as a society, more and more detached from where our food comes from. So, I mean, we're, we genuinely believe that every junior school child should get an opportunity to go to a farm, no matter what it is, uh, but at a commercial farm at some stage during their junior school career, just to help them re-understand where their food comes from. Yeah. And have you, um, you've had to cancel them this year due to COVID. Have they all rebooked for next year? They have, yes. Um, every single school is uh, is booked up for next year. Um, I mean, we, we, we try and focus um, as much as we can on the inner city schools. Um, that's, in our humble opinion, uh, that they're, they're the guys that need it the most. Um, and the uh, it's quite challenging for them to get here, really. Uh, we, we found out last year that it costs £700 for them to hire a bus to come the three or four miles out to central Nottingham uh, to our place at Arnold, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and for you, though, it's, it's you know, it's not it, you, you don't get paid for what you're doing, do you? You do do it for the uh, purpose of educating, you know, the next generation and the, and the children. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it is, it, as I said before, it's, it's a big commitment for us. Um, it's it's myself, selling my wife, a um, couple of tractor drivers quite often um, for a whole day. And it, 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 it's it, it's very much our commitment to our local community. But I, I think, as I say, the, the kids get a huge amount out of it. And I've said many times that it's my favourite time of the year. Usually our, our business, our farm brings us nothing but hassle. It's <laughs> customers, it's suppliers, it's weather, it's staff, it's all sorts of things, pest and disease. But just for that five or six hours, every so often with a group of six, seven, eight year olds, you get an opportunity to look at what we do, where we live and just how fortunate we are yeah. um, through a very different set of eyes. Yeah, well, it, it's commendable, John. I'll take take my hat off to you. And I like the hats that the children are wearing as well. Yeah, bit of, uh, uh, yes, some <laughs> desperately, <laughs> desperate advertising, I think. <laughs> um, when I came up to see you, John, the first time, it was on the back of a really hot spell. So there was no activity at New Farm on the carrots and parsnip side. Um, why was that? We were having to choose when we harvested carrots and parsnips. Uh, I mean, it was we were up in the sort of low to mid 30 degrees uh, in temperature and even harvesting carrot and parsnip overnight. We were seeing uh, temperatures of the root coming in uh, into the factory at 25 degrees. And although we've got some very good quality and high powered hydro coolers, the ability to strip basically 20 degrees of field heat out of a vegetable in less than 15 minutes is is challenging at the best of time so we were very much choosing when we harvested and when we packed um certainly root crop because of the difficulties in uh, in getting them down to temperature 
Um, so we actually went to the uh, went to the to the cabbage field, um, and we were harvesting here. Uh, the gentleman with his backside uh, <laughs> pointing to us. Um, we were harvesting savoy for uh, the manufacturing uh, sector, uh, and this was specifically for manufacturing because having grown some cabbages right next to some pine trees with all the wind earlier in in the in the summer uh, it had dropped the pine le needles into the cabbages and we were having to strip off all of the outside leaves and just leave the heart um, to make sure that we didn't have any foreign body contamination in the product so um, yeah that was it was a it was it was a red hot day even then uh, and the guys were having to put a lot of effort into getting those cabbages off the ground yeah, you were also busy during COVID with the Boris boxes, weren't you? We were, uh, and one of our food service customers uh, was uh, picked up 50% of the uh, of the shielding boxes. Uh, we were providing carrot for that, um, 500 gram and one kilo of carrots in a plastic bag. Um, that huge variability throughout the period as to how many they wanted. We peaked at about uh, 120,000 packs uh, in one week. Um, but we were told right at the beginning there was about 1.5 million people going to be uh, going to be in the shielding cluster, uh, of whom they they perceived that 450,000 would actually want uh, to take part in the scheme. Uh, but we were one of three carrot suppliers uh, supplying 50%. So if we peaked at sort of 120,000 a week, that's probably heading nearer the million mark. So a lot of people okay. took up that opportunity. Yeah, crikey. Um, and then the oil side of the business. I know that during um, when COVID, well, lockdown first happened, you said that demand for rapeseed oil went through the roof. How's production now? Uh, I mean, it, it settled back uh, below normal. I mean, we said right at, right back when uh, lockdown happened, and I mean, we were we were outloading three hundred percent of a normal weekly volume back in April um, and it was almost inevitable that at some stage during the summer somebody would open the grocery cupboard and go oh my god why have I got 20 <laughs> bottles of Borderfields cold pressed rapeseed oil in, in my cupboard and, and I think that's happened. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the changes in buying habits through mainly through retail because that's that's the only they're the only people that have been open right the way through um, but the profiles changed week after week after week and it's been very very difficult to second guess uh, what any week is going to look like um, but we've had a couple of quiet weeks uh, we've started to build back again now um, September onwards through the autumn winter is our peak period so yeah we're, we're, we're busy with rapeseed busy with coconut uh, we're actually starting some macadamia uh, nut butters this week so yeah there's a lot going on I found it fascinating that um, you said you would require 4,000 acres of rapeseed oil to fulfil the demands of the plant um, and you source quite a lot of rapeseed with, locally but from other farmers don't you, you're not, you're not looking to produce uh, or grow rapeseed as a, as a crop next year, is that correct? It, it is, I mean we, as, a, as a farming business we grow quite a lot of, of leafy brassicas, so cabbages um, so rapeseed in the rotation is is not easy for us, um, but uh, people listening to this who 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 farm and and have businesses in uh, East Anglia, um, the East and, and the East Midlands particularly, uh, will have been very badly affected by cabbage stem flea beetle in rapeseed, and it's becoming a more and more difficult crop to grow. So we're sourcing our, our, our um, sourcing geography is is getting wider and wider. Um, we're choosing growers from all over our local area and uh, up into Northumberland and, and the Scottish borders um, to make sure that we've got the right quality of the right variety and of the right quantity to keep us going through the year. And you're right, we need we need 4,000 acres, but only if uh, if we're producing one and a half tonnes to the acre, which this year has been not easy. We need 6,000 tonnes a year. Yeah. And what's the conversion rate from a ton of rapeseed off the field um, to the oil that comes out the other end? If uh, if the if the oil content coming off farm is good, so upwards of forty five percent, 
um, we'll see uh, physical oil yields of, of above 400 litres per tonne. We're cold pressing, so we can't get all of the oil out. We leave somewhere between uh, 10 and 12% uh, oil remains uh, in the uh, in the expeller, in the cake. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're from, from 6,000 tonnes, we'll be producing um, circa two and a half million litres. Okay. And then looking to the future, John, I know that when I when I came out, you were telling me about the different staff that you've got working. I think you've got 250 staff working for you up at Oak Hill, Nottingham. Yes, uh, and a, a vast, vast percentage of uh, our ops team are Eastern European. Um, uh, Brexit for our business and I think our industry, although others may uh, may disagree, has been uh, not ideal uh, on on many levels, um, but particularly at the moment, the the, uh, the threats around uh, labour availability are, are are quite challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the the, the 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 pandemic and the threat for many many jobs um, should mean that the the availability of um, UK nationals and others. Um, to uh, into the jobs market will change dramatically but i still think there's a huge risk around anybody really wanting to come and join our industry it's generally cold generally wet generally low paid and it's hard work yeah. um, and even the pick for britain uh, campaign through the summer there were a number of people a huge number of people applied mm -hmm. but when it was when it were, became clear that uh, it meant very early starts in the morning, potentially very late finishes at night, particularly when fruit picking, potentially five or six hours off in the heat of the day, in the middle of the day, maybe having to travel long distances to get there, maybe having to live in a caravan because it's a seven day a week operation. It turned people off. It's not normal work. And, and, and I think that's something that we really need to come to come to terms with and get to grips with over the next 12 months. Yeah. Yeah, John, that's that's been really helpful. Thank you very much for giving us an overview of uh, your farm, um, what's going on at the moment, and um, hopefully next year we can actually come and see you in person. You'd be very welcome. Thank you, John.